Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Darcy. This is Puddin, Darcyzzle, Brian. There you go, <laughs> switched it around. Today, we're doing some deep sea fishing in our Stewart, Florida. You wanna tell them what we're targeting? Yeah, we're trying to target cobia, but they're a little bit elusive. These cobia aren't elusive because the boat right next to us just caught a lunker. You threw a so, lunker in our face. I don't know what he's talking about, but <laughs> there's fish around, just it's a matter of uh, if they're gonna bite for us or not. But they're here and they're biting. You're getting bit or not getting bit? Hold on. What? The bait was just like running out really fast. There we, oh, just got tapped. Or he pulled them off the hook. Tap, tap, tap. Eat it, eat it, eat it. I think he just pulled it off the hook. Leave it. I think it's off the hook. Three taps, he's gone. Usually you swallow it. Could have been a barracuda. True, but they swipe it. I don't know. Shit. That one. Oh, he dropped it again. What the? F dropped it again. It might be a kudo. Just watch this by the engine. I'm still got this fish on. Hold on. Still playing with it. Just watch this by the engine. Okay, Reel it up. It. Straight down. Fish is on this. Take this. Take this. Take this. I got, got it. Real. Go. 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 Ryan, move. Bring the boat in gear. Get the in gear. Boat in gear. Please, please. Stop. Lift the engine up. What do I do? I'm cut off. Are you kidding me? Yep. No, no. Jesus. Quickly. Net. I don't think it's a keeper. All right, all right. I told you. He's right over there. All right, you good. You good. You good. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see it. Get ready. So floppy. Get right, him, right, baby. Right, right, right. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. I got it. I got it. I got it. Straight got up it. and down. Get him away from these rods. All right. Shush, 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 shush. <sighs> oh, God. It's All a good right. sized fish. Let's you check him. Let's deep. check him. Before anything else happened, guys, that was insane. Insane. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. That is a good sized fish. But I'm not getting my hopes up. Where's the ruler? Where's the ruler? He's up front. That was insane. He went straight under the freaking engine. Oh my god. All right, drop him out so we can measure him. There we go. It's a nice fish, guys. They gotta be 36 inches to the fork these days. We're gonna get him right on this ruler. Calm down, buddy. Put his nose on that. Hold his nose on that. I think he's right on 36. So I'm trying to say, like, right here, he's, he's, he's like almost a quarter past 36 with the tails pinched or whatever. He keeps. All right. He's straight, right? He's straight. Oh, he's straight as hell. I got him. He keeps. He's right at 36. All right. He 100% keeps, like, right at 36. <laughs> and this is a prop, proper ruler. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. confident that somebody pulls us over and checks it, he'll be right on 36. Oh, my God. Sick. <laughs> All right. Ooh, I got scraped by his things up top. All right, beautiful fish on the flat line. Nope, that was on... My line. That never happens where we get a fish like on the money. <laughs> oh. And these things are, you know, they're really strict now with regulations. They used to be 33, now it's 36 to the fork. And he's right on the money at the 36. And um, you're only allowed two fish per boat now, I believe, right? Nice one. Yeah. They fight so hard. That was just insane when that line went off and he was kind of like swimming with it and eating it, going around the boat. And then shortly after that, I was tight. And then we had lines out. I'm like telling Brian to grab it. The wind's picking up. <laughs> it was insane. The fish went under the engine for a second. And then I went completely slack and thought I lost him. But he just turned and went to the surface like Cobia do. So beautiful. 
keeper fish right there. Let's see if we can put one more in the boat. All right. <laughs> but we got our target species. Yeah. Woo! All right. Took a couple nice pictures. I want to show them those things on top. Warm yeah. Warm up all those things. But these are super dangerous. The bigger the fish, those bigger those are, and they get raised and they come out of the of the uh, fish. But razor sharp all the way down. Yeah. Those get in you. You're dad bad in deep trouble. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bleed this fish right here in the back. But that fish for our size being right on the money at 36 to the fork. Look at the belly. That fish nice. is gonna be good to eat. So I'm gonna bleed them right back here. I failed to bring a cooler today, um, but quickly. Failed to bring a bucket. Sorry, bucket. Um, yeah, I do have a bag, fish bag. I'm, I'm not gonna rake the gills, but right back here there's a membrane. You guys can clearly see this membrane. Just cut it. The fish will bleed out. All right, he's already bleeding out. Oh, in that gutter. Oh boy, it's a lot. Yeah. Get him back there. All right, there you go. All right. Nice work. You wanna see if we can get another one in the boat? Yeah. What do you think? Oof. Took two hours, almost two hours to get that one cobia bite. Yeah, another cat that threw a lunker in our faces. Incredible. You know, the best, one of the best guys out here, so whatever. Yeah, no. And but then, we, we um, say that all the time. We throw lunkers in people's faces, they do it back to yeah, us. No, right. So, no, I, I mean, whatever. I got no shame in my game when the best guy out here throws a lunker in my face. Yeah, especially uh, when they're out here fishing every day and we just don't. Yeah, no problem. Turn the well on. Come on. So, uh, yeah, I went, you know. We're not expert at any kind of fish, especially this Kobe. He was all over the place. And... That was insane, dude. I thought I lost him. I freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> all right, don't worry, that Marine Mat. One of Darcy Gray's sponsors, <laughs> is gonna, that's going to clean up no problem. Don't worry. Marine Mat, non skid flooring. Just don't track it all over. All right. I'm finished bleeding out the fish, but you guys get the gist of it. Pretty clean. I got it. Get out the gas. Come on, fish. All right, I got, I, I got Guggen, I got my line stuck in the engine, and while we're trying to fix that, Darcy got hooked up. Oh my gosh. Get it up, get it up. Get it up. Dude. <laughs> I know. Are we on the wreck? Oh, no. We're not. All right, your line is tangled in it. Shit. I might lose it. No, your line is tangled in me over here. Shit. Do, He's on the surface. He's on the surface. Shit. Shit. I gotta go through this. I gotta go through this. I'm gonna lose it. Hold on, Shoot. All right. I'll cut it. I'll cut it. Just grab your line and tie it to the boat. Clean it. No, I did. It's gone. Go, 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 go. On the surface. Big cobia. You're gonna get the gaff. I got the gaff. You're gonna get the gaff. We got 30 feet of line. Okay, come back. Can you come back here? I'm working on it, baby. If you can't, you can't. I'll come up there. No, no, no. We're coming back. We got the gaff. I'm gonna hand line him. I get it. I think he's gonna gaff him. Yeah, that's a keeper. Okay. He ain't done. Okay, take this. What? You want to break the weight, break the weight. Where's Hold the on. Weight? Hold on. I gotta cut the slack. Shoot, this is not good. All right, here we go. All right. I'm gonna walk towards you. <laughs> All right, get it? Baby, get it? Okay, I got it. If you need to let go, let go. I will. Hurry up. You're gonna gas him good. Drop the rod. Line is broken. Help me. Oh. Help me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get the rod. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. I almost lost that fish. Holy shit. Dude. <laughs> the line snapped at the boat. I barely got the gaff in. The gaff ripped out when we got him over the deck. Barely caught that fish. That was gnarly. That's definitely he a 36. He came right to the surface. That's our biggest right there. All day 36. He's probably like 42. All right, we'll let that fish calm down just a second. And we're going to get our boundary situated here. We just lost a whole bunch of line. You can see we're straight up in the engine here. 
and having no engine to like reel up on, go up on close to that fish was really, really dangerous. We got really lucky this fish is in the boat, honestly. Beautiful cobia, look at them. Even Googans can catch a fish. Dude, yeah, I just heard you say line just snapped and I'm like, I have to get this fish yeah. in that boat and I saw he wasn't gaffed properly either because he did that crazy jump right yeah, at the boat. Still so wiggly. He did that crazy jump and the gaff literally ripped out as he came over the deck. Like, and he just happened to land in the boat and not in the ocean. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Nice fish though. You know, Darcy was trying to get the thing out and I was- Of the still, engine. And I was like still fishing, I had the rod. Then I like, I just gave her the rod and we just started like, <laughs> so I take this, I gotta like, Managed the boat a little, it was crazy. So I, got the, I got the engine up because the thing is tangled in here. This is tangled in there. It's an absolute mess. Get your lunch, babe. Woo! Oh, hold on, hold on. Everybody chill, relax, Kobe. There he is. 40, 40 what is 41. it? 40, he's 40 to the fork. Yeah, I said 40 to the fork. Nice. I can tell now. Almost just under 40 to the fork. All righty. Here's that beautiful fish. They are also fat today. Beautiful fish. We're gonna take a couple pictures with the calendar. That's why I uh, put my bikini on, but excellent to catch our limit of cobia. Like I said, it's been about three years since we actually put a keeper cobia in the boat. So beautiful fat fish right there with the tail gaff, but I don't care because he's in the boat. Woo. All right, guys, we're back at the house. We're all set up, ready to clean the first cobia. So I just sprayed them all off because he was pretty slimy and got some more blood out of the gill plates so I don't have a messy table. But I've got an assortment of knives today. We're gonna to be doing something a little different, of course, filleting this fish, but I'm also going to be harvesting the ribs, which I usually never, ever do. I always leave those intact on a fish. And I've never done this before on a cobia. But we're also not gonna be taking his collars, which the collars would be this section right here. Reason being is I'm going to try and donate the carcass for research to the FWC because they're doing a lot of research on cobia right now between March and September. If you catch a fish, you call them. So as soon as I'm done filleting this fish, I'm gonna call them up. But let's dive right into this. I'm not using my Narcissal fillet knives today, and there's a reason behind that. But the cool thing about Smith Consumer Products, who makes my knives, is they have a wide assortment available, including sturdy boning knives. So we got an eight inch boning knife right here, the sport edge. We also got a six inch boning knife right here, which might be perfect to knock off the ribs with. And then we got the seven inch Loaya, which is gonna be perfect for skinning the fish and getting the uh, delicious cobia steaks off the skin. And my knives would be good, but they're a little bit too bendable and flexible for this thick fish that we're gonna be working with today. So let's dive right into this, starting with, let's start with this knife. This is the uh, eight inch bony knife. I usually use this for bonita strips and stuff. It's very sturdy and works great. So to start, we're gonna make a uh, cut right behind the peck fin just like so, angling up into the head. Don't need to cut straight back because you're gonna lose all that meat right here. And they do have a crazy big head. There we go. And I'm just gonna do go a little slowly today. I don't wanna cut through all these organs you see right here because that's part of the cobia research. So now I'm gonna make a cut, a light cut right down the belly because this is the area we're gonna take as a fillet, but I don't wanna to go too deep and puncture all the organs. So we're just gonna take our time with it today. No big deal. We got all day. And there you go, you can see the organs are fully intact. Perfect. Now, turn that knife around on the back and just go down that dorsal fin, making like a half inch to an inch deep cut as I go down the back. When we get to this tail section, it's pretty tough. So a lot, so what you should do, probably cut it like right there. Perfect. Now, we're just gonna slab off this beautiful steak or loin of this fish all together. And it's been a minute since I filleted a cobia. But I am so excited to have cobia. You guys have no idea. And I'm leaving him up because of the awkward shape of this fish. Like even if I turned him to his side, he just lops back to, to the forward section. And they look like a big shark, they really do. 
And this guy has his little spines raised. That's how he pat, like died with them raised. So I'm trying to be extra careful and not cut myself. Very dangerous, even when they're dead. And then their spine sticks out quite a bit. So we're gonna go around that. There we go. And now I'm gonna go to the back of the fish first and we're gonna knock this whole side off. We'll do it all at once. There we go. Because we're gonna cut through the ribs and harvest the ribs to eat. And I hear they're excellent. So I'm very excited to taste it. There we go. And the ribs are right here. So I don't want, so I wanna cut through them. So I'm gonna go with a smaller bony knife to finish this fish. See if I can get them on the side real quick here. There we go. All right, now when you get to this section, I just wanna break through the bones with my knife. Let me just switch my knife. And I'm cutting right through those bones so they stay attached to the fillet. And with a sharp knife, you can easily do this. Perfect. Look at that. Nice. That is beautiful. Organs intact. That's exactly what they want. Now we got our beautiful Colby loin here, the top and the bottom loin, as well as our rib section. So let's go ahead and knock out our rib section first and see what that looks like and then slab out the rest of this fish. So I think the best method, I'm gonna switch back. This is his ribs all right here. It's, it ends right here, basically in the, body, the belly cavity. So the whole belly cavity has ribs all the way to here and then there's no more ribs. So let's see how much I can get. But I'm gonna go underneath see what angle these bones are at because there's also pin bones here I'm breaking peeling it off the skin right there oops made a little cut in that red meat super sharp knife I think that's what we want right there we've got all the bones and ribs intact in there a little bit of red blood meat right there we can take off before it gets prepped in the kitchen. But besides that, that is ready to cook up. Hmm. Nice cobia loin. Looks like a mini uh, spare ribs. Spare ribs. <laughs> yeah, baby's, baby back spare ribs right there. That's probably going to be excellent because usually the meat that's always closer to the bone tastes more excellent like their collars. So uh, beautiful fish. Now that we got the ribs taken care of, let's go ahead and knock out the rest of it. First things first, there's been a lot of those nasty flies around lately. It's season for them. They love my fish. In the cooler, land shark logger. All right, now I'm gonna break this up into manageable sections so I can properly skin this fish. And so what I like to do is do it by thickness. Probably do two, probably do three sections here. Section right here by thickness, as best as you can. There's one, and then this part is crazy, crazy thick. That's probably gonna have to be even split into two pieces. All right, now switching to the seven inch Luaya, which is the knife I always use before I had my dark sizzle fillet knives, but it's got a little bit of bend and flex to it, and I use this on most species of fish. So right down, you see, even though we bled this fish, still got a decent amount of red blood, of bloodline and on the skin line. So I'm gonna cut on this side of the bloodline down. It's hard to cut through a cobia's skin. You just turn the knife and you get a beautiful loin. And obviously we're gonna clean up the rest of that bloodline, but you see it rests very close to the skin here. So when you do this, try to keep your knife up a little. Otherwise you can just go back in and take off that blood, but it will be very fishy. There we go. Nice. Those are some healthy pieces of meat right there. And all that's left of that skin, 
that little bit of bloodline and we're all set. We're gonna be using this for stone crab traps and also to uh, dead bait for tarpon up here, coming up real soon. But I'm gonna finish up the other side, well finish this, finish the other side of this filet and fish and then meet you guys in the house. We're cooking with pudding portion of this video. All right guys, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. This is the Cobia Ribs edition. Very exciting. I did look up some menus, I, some menus, some um, recipes, because I never did this before. I don't really cook a lot of ribs. And I found one from Virginia. If you guys know, they catch a lot of cobia in the Virginia and the uh, Chesapeake Bay area. They said to rub um, just some sort of fat on it. I decided to rub butter on it. I thought you know, bas basting them in butter would be a great idea. And then I put a bunch of spices on there, like a dry rub. A lot of the dry rubs, ooh, get in there close, sizzle. Still on the camera. Here it's smoking, I got the thing heated up. All right, so I put a nice dry rub on them, on these two. I'm cooking them all different sauces in all different ways. So the ribs, I got like a dry rub, a butter, then a dry rub on there, and then a, a sauce, like a habanero sauce. And here, here, I got some beer roll for you, of course. And then I did like a barbecue sauce on one, which is a great way to cook cobia. I'm really excited about these ribs. You know, ribs will have a very high fatty content and they just make them delicious. And then I put a different sauce on this one. And then on this one, I just put salt and pepper. So that one's gonna be plain. So we're having like a real nice taste test. All right, so I'm gonna put them on here, let them sit for four or five minutes. And then we're gonna flip them over. All right guys, let's check these. Gotta flip them over. I gotta take these off immediately. We had, I had the big steaks. And so I cut them thinner, you know, so they cook more evenly. And also, so you get more, you get more spice and juice on there. I'm just, I'm, now I'm worried about these ribs. They're a little thicker. Yeah. Oh yeah, these are all done. Holy cow. Look, it only took about six, seven minutes. Maybe I have my grill on too high, I don't know. All right, let's get them in for the taste test. So Sizzle, I can hear you eating. <laughs> all right, we're in for the taste test. I added some more of the sauce to, to them because, you know, cooking with pudding here, we're doing a little bit of experimentating. And uh, so some, a lot of the sauce got burnt off. They cooked them like seven minutes because I had them so thin. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if you cook them thin, you won't burn the outside and leave the inside uncooked. And you, again, you'll have more room. You'll have more surface area for flavor to add. Spices, sauces, all that. Okay, that's a trick I learned from the deli days. I worked in delis in New York for like five years. So we're trying the different sauces first and then the ribs. So Darcy's trying... What is that? I think that's the barbecue. Okay, I tried this one, it's very good. This one? Mm -hmm. This one is the, uh, this is this one. This one. Costco, these are all like from Costco and stuff. That's really good. Yeah, and again, cobia, like I, I always, I always often mention cobia in reference to other fish when we, when we cook here, because we don't catch it like maybe once a year, okay, when they run around here. Yeah. And uh, we've missed the last couple of years, like Darcy said. In, in the we've got some shorts, but you know, no, no keeper fish, right? Right. right. So, again, cobia is a, a little bit denser fish than some other fish. Mm -hmm. And so, the denser it is, the more careful you want to be about overcooking it. Yes. And these are cooked really well. And I think also the reason cobia are so good is like they eat those crustaceans and crabs, and like they yeah, just I've heard crazy, that. like rock shrimp, all the all the crustaceans on the bottom, they love it. We got, I think we got to slow down. I feel like we're just diving into this food. It's so good. Like every one is better than the last. This is just plain butter, mm -hmm. based, and salt and pepper. The bomb. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> You're not drinking your lens. Right? I don't have time. All right. Let's hear what we came for. The delicacy of the ribs. All right. How do we do this? Cut pieces. Yeah. He only got a piece for himself. I'm very selfish. He is very selfish. So I mean, we've never had these, these before. These literally look like pork ribs, like cooked now. It's supposed to be a delicacy. Oh my goodness. It's just like so soft. It's way different. The meat yeah. is way different. Let's go. Whoa. And the ribs are like this. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa. I'm like this. Brian's spilling cobia juice all over the floor. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, the ribs are small, not like cow ribs. It's like a little rib. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get it stuck in your teeth. Mm. Cow ribs? You mean pig ribs? Whatever they do. <laughs> Very good. A little different fit, flavor, more fatty. Very good. All right, no. I, think we, I think we proved our point. So, Kobe ribs. He can't even eat. 
He didn't even stop. Okay, why do I stop? Yeah, he's doing... Sounds like a pig stuck in the mud. Mm. Doesn't he? Alright, All right, I gotta clean up the floor. Uh, but that was amazing. Big difference in the Kobe of rib meat. That is like definitely a delicacy and I understand now why people harvest them. So we'll be doing that more often in the future. But hopefully it's not another three years since we'll get to keep Kobe. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for joining us on today's adventure. Everything we talked about, link down below. Yeah, because you didn't drink yours. And so, until our next adventure, follow Bye, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on catching. On catching.